What is going on guys, Second Gear here and welcome to our weekly uh, video where I show you where he is, what he's got and all that good stuff and you know, throw my tiny opinions in here and there on what he's selling, if it's good or not or any of that good stuff. But getting straight down to it guys, he is down the, well, central staircase going towards the Vanguard and Eris Morn and he's nestled between the two Crucible Quartermasters right here. Look at that Titan, someone got a Christmas present from Zer last week, didn't you? Didn't you, Lou Boo? <laughs> I don't know anymore, guys. I, I think I've actually gone insane now. But for the Titanist Titan this week, guys, we have the Helm of Innermost Light, or Inmost Light, with a Intellect and Strength roll of 50 and 51. Remember, if you don't like the roll, you can always purchase some of his glass needles and change the roll. I know they have saved many exotic from the trash, uh, from being trashed every single damn week from Zer. So that's, it's always a good thing. you just got to remember that they're there and just make sure you pick up a few each week if you're going to be using them or just preemptively in case you get a really anticipated exotic but you hate the roll on it. Because there's nothing worse than getting one that you've wanted for so long and it's just an awful roll. It's just kind of soul destroying. But in case you've been living under a rock, this works for the striker class. And would you look at the visor? Lime green with the ascendant plane? Oh, looks lovely. Beautiful. But it is for the Striker subclass, so when you actually activate your Fist of Havoc, uh, Fist of Havoc, this gives you Recklessness, which provides Death from Above and Headstrong for, obviously, Fist of Havoc, or Fist of Panic, as the hunters like to call it. For just your dicks. Simple as that. <laughs> uh, Death from Above lets you aim your actual Fist of Havoc while, while you're midair, so you can actually get quite long-range super kills with it in PvP, or you can take out a massive wave of enemies in PvE. So it's just great and headstrong, if I remember correctly, lets you travel uh, a little bit further when you actually cast your super. So then you can obviously get a better little, you know, Fist of Havoc arc or, yeah. I, I don't know what else to say about it. It's just, it's a fun exotic. It's not the most useful, but by God, it's fun. Me and my friend Osborne, we actually crossed uh, the Vault of Glass Chasm on the jumping puzzle using two of these. Just literally supermaned our way com just totally across. It was really, really random but fun. But alongside that, we also gained bonus super energy from melee kills on Minions of Darkness. And we have heavy lifting, which is the same thing, but while using heavy weapons. So happy days on that. And lastly, we have got Invigoration, so you get many, me many? melee energy on all pickups which is yeah why not it's good but once again you can change all of that with the magical glass needle so be sure to pick up a few of them if you do not like it and for the hunters guys it's kind of exciting because we have got one of the lost exotics returning from year one i've only ever seen one person use these in my entire time playing destiny i'm not even kidding i've only seen one person with these and they have been tweaked but we'll get to this last tier in a minute so we have the Radiant Dance Machine boots, the only, well, except for the Taken King ones, these are the only boot, uh, exotic boots for the Hunter. The only ones. And they suck. Personally, I think they suck. I have got a Hunter, but they suck. So the apparent exotic perk for this is you move more quickly while aiming down your weapon. See, that to me does not sound exotic class, you know? Like Fist of Havoc, you can't, um, sorry... Helm of Inmost Light, you can't aim your uh, Fist of Havocs normally. It lets you aim them, which you can get some amazing either clutch kills or just save your ass kills. You know? But moving more quickly while aiming your weapon, no. They, need to, they really need to step up the Hunter's game just a little bit. But alongside that, guys, I forgot to do the uh, Intellect and... Ooh, Strength. So we have a Max Intellect of 58 and Strength 55, which is really good for hunters because obviously their melee is OP as hell. Plus if you run Blade Dance you can get your escape artist quicker or any of that good stuff. But for the ammo, uh, uh, what am I trying to say, the bonus ammo, we have sniper ammo which is lovely and machine gun which again lovely stuff. And this final tier here guys because they were, uh, Bungie did say that they were going to be tweaking some of the older exotics to fit in with year two so for the radiant dance machines we have arc solar and void double down which increased well it gives you increased agility for five seconds 
after avoid double kill, solar double kill, arc double kill, and phone would you be quiet please. So that could actually be quite useful considering you can get so many uh, double kills using obviously the designated elements. Where am I going with this? In PvE, obviously it's going to be a lot more difficult in PvP because, well, restrictions for elemental weapons and all that crap, yeah, so... These are more designed for PvE rather than PvP, but if you just want the increased aim uh, aim speed, then obviously go ahead, use them in PvP, what do I care? And for the Warlocks this week, guys, we've got the Nothing Manacles, which is for the, what is it, Void Walker subclass, with a max discipline of 65, which for Warlocks is bloody amazing, because their grenades are stupidly overpowered. Ah, now the exotic perk for this one, guys. Uh, I did use him for quite a while on my warlock before he had to, um, yeah, go away. He's on vacation at the moment in a bin somewhere. I don't know. My second titan kind of lost him. But we have scatter charge, which enables tracking for scatter grenades, which are kind of OP as hell. And you get to hold an extra grenade, which again, kind of OP. What? I, I, I don't know. That's it. I, they, they're good gauntlets. Awful subclass. Great grenades, great gauntlets. I don't know what else to say about that. But in the middle one, we have energy projection, which increases your throw distance, which for Warlocks is kind of essential. Their throw distance is kind of puny compared to the other two classes. So you always need that little bit of boost. And you also get momentum uh, transfer. And I did something weird with my M's just there, good God. Uh, which you gain bonus melee energy on grenade hits. So that's all always lovely. And we've also got hand cannon loader, which increases reload speed of hand cannons, and the same thing for rocket launchers. I don't know. Hand cannons kind of took a swift kick in the nuts in the last update, so I don't know how useful that's going to be. And we have the ever lovely Monte Carlo for the weapon of the week, guys. And this, oh, this gun. Let me let me just tell you a secret, quick. This gun maxed out at 310, 320, whatever you want it at. It depends if leveling or the level matters in Crucible. If you run a Warlock, this is your god. This weapon is your god. Why? Because of that. Monte Carlo method. Dealing damage with this weapon reduces your... your uh, What am I trying to... Tongue, get out, get me a new one, please. Jesus Christ. Uh, your Reduces your melee cooldown and grants a chance to fully recharge your melee ability with each kill. That is insane. Like, don't be fooled by the impact of the damage output on this thing is bloody spectacular, let alone the stability, reload, magazine, and range. Plus, it's a high fire rate uh, auto rifle, and auto rifles just had a massive buff. So, Bungie's probably going, you know what? We've buffed the auto rifles. Give them a really good one, and just let them be happy for a couple weeks until the hunters come out of hiding. Oh, alongside... Uh, that lovely exotic perk, guys. We have Field Scout Send It and High Caliber Rounds, which actually gives you quite a nice buff to your impact, which is great. Unfortunately, though, it makes the weapon a little bit harder to handle, but the stability, you're not really going to have a problem with that, which is just lovely. We have got a hip fire, which increases the, bon uh, the weapon has bonus accuracy when firing from the hip. We have Smart Drift Control and Aggressive Ballistics. I would say go with Aggressive Ballistics for obvious reasons. Like, look at the amount. It nearly doubles the impact. Plus, if you had high caliber rounds as well. Or, to be honest, I would probably use Sender Aggressive Ballistics. Just because that extra bit of range, that massive amount of impact. It, it's just lovely. So, definitely pick that up if you need it for your collection. Or, if you dismantled it thinking it's crap, buy it again. Just buy it again. <laughs> Flat out, 23 strange coins. Get it. Get it. Go. Uh, as for the curios this week, oh, wait a second. The Legacy Engram of the Week, guys, is a primary weapon. So if you want to unlock those Year 2 variants, be sure to grab this and, you know, hopefully get what you need. Unfortunately, it is steep at 31 strange coins. But what are you going to do? Zer likes to steal from us. And like I was about to say, for the curios this week, guys, we have got the Emerald Coil and the Void Drive. I'm not going to say what they are this time because I say it every week. If you don't know by now, what are you doing on Destiny? Seriously, what? Uh, as always, we have got the Heavy Ammo Sims, Three of Coins, and Glass Needles for various amounts of strange coinage or motor light and exotic shard for Glass Needles. Ah, oh, crap, I'm going to have to say it. 
basically these drives. 23 strange coins each, they'll turn a sparrow from blue to purple and give it a nice little flare in the tail. Emerald coil will obviously give it green and the void drive will obviously give it purple. And I'm still fairly bloody, like, you know, what, what am I even trying to say? I'm still kind of all cloudy in the head from the cold I had months ago because colds hit me like a hundred times harder than most people. I don't know why, they just don't want to leave. But hopefully Zer has something for you guys. And in case you haven't been on since uh, blah, 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 the weekly update, look at it. We have a lovely new festival. Do you see this? Look at it. Majestic billowing in the wind. How lovely. And obviously we got the little decorations down here. And I haven't even told you what this is yet. This is the Sparrow Racing League or the SRL as its acronym too. Uh, well, it kind of says in the title. Sparrow racing. Racing for sparrows. I haven't had a chance to try yet, but from people I know who have, it's pretty damn fun. So I'm probably going to have a little quick run on that today, as well as do my Golgoroth challenge, because I kind of haven't yet. No. Ah, oh, dear. Oh, didn't notice that one. Look at that. I would hate to be the guy that has to paint the tower. Can you imagine hopping on a lift to go up there to paint that red and white and blue for like two weeks? Really? Hell no. Oh, just good God, no. But that's about it for the video, guys. Hopefully, Zer had something for you this week. Hopefully, uh, well, you're kind of happy with his progress as he's getting better throughout the weeks. I know I am. It's kind of been a bit surprising, but you know what? Happy days. At least he's learning. And overall, because I only speak to you once a week at the moment, which is going to end because I have got my monitor downstairs right now, and I chose like a... Acer XB240HA uh, right, it's all singing all dancing it is only 1080p but it is 144 hertz and 1 millisecond response time so that's kind of like oh my god yeah yeah I know nerdy statistics whatever uh, but anyway guys good luck for the rest of the week in your Oryx challenge coming Tuesday uh, Re Sparrow Racing, Trials of Osiris, all that great stuff that Destiny brings to you each and every week, even though I don't really play anymore. And if anyone here who watches plays COD, Double XP Weekend starts at 10 a.m. PST, or if you're in the UK like me, it's like 7 o'clock in the evening. But that'll be rolling on all the way till Monday morning, I think. So jump on there, get your level ups, all that good stuff. And that's about it from me, guys. So until next time, I shall see you all later.